Hello, uh, today our topic would be basic templates. Um, for the agenda, we would discuss both how a template looks like in binaries. So we would try and understand uh, how to identify templates, what happens in binaries uh, when we use templates, and how we can also identify uh, functions that are templates and functions that are they're just regular functions. So for this uh, explanation, we will also use an example to show how different functions can be a template and also can be just regular functions. Uh, and we will also have a brief overview of how to define the basic templates in IDA. Uh, there are uh, more complex templates that we will not discuss during this part of the training. Um, for example, objects, uh, as the template type and stuff like that. Um, but we will discuss the basic uh, types of template and this would cover a, a lot of things you would see in binaries. So regarding an intro, uh, if you don't know what templates are, so there are uh, generic functions that can be used with different uh, data types. So you can create a function that uh, with different uh, usages would have different types. Uh, and the function itself would change a little based on the types that it uses. And the compiler generates the variants of the same function uh, as many times as required. So it means that for each uh, variance that we need, each type that is used for the template, there would be a different function in the binary. So for one template, there could be uh, many functions in the binaries. Uh, so it's actually kind of a macro in a way that just like creates more and more functions when it's compiled at the end. So you might um, already understand from that that when we do reversing, this is uh, something that takes a lot of time and this is very complex. So like I said, uh, it requires a lot of time and you would have a lot of functions with similar functionality but the types would be different. So the return, for example, the return value would be different, the parameters that are passed could be different, and the functionality inside would be similar, but it would uh, depend on the type. So this is something that you can identify and understand better about templates. Also, define them in IDA is not super trivial. You would have to do a lot of adjustments and sometimes just like use the mental names. So um, this is not very easy. It's not like you have some just define a template and that's it. And also, like if you have a non-basic types, like it would take more time. It would be more complex to understand. So you first would have to understand the objects and then continue in understanding the templates of the uh, objects and the usages of it. So uh, for this topic, we would not need to dive into those kind of uh, scenarios, but we would discuss the basic templates with the basic types. So in order to do that and to understand what we uh, understood so far, uh, we would use an example. So in this example, uh, we can see there are three uh, function calls that are used. And we would examine the functions and the parameters that are used uh, for each function to understand it better. So first, what we would do, we would uh, define the uh, different uh, local variables in the binary. So we have both integers and a long type. So I changed the uh, binary, as you can see here, uh, the, parameter, the parameters that are relevant and the local variables that are relevant are marked as an integer or longs. And let's continue and understand better which one relevant to uh, which function. If we start with examining the first function, so uh, what we can see is that we have two numbers, both of them of type int, uh, five and six in this case specific, but we can see that because we are using edx and eax, which are four bytes registers, the, the um, parameters that are used are actually an integers and not a long. And uh, we also can see that it's not a float uh, type because we are not using any of the uh, float um, opcodes. This is just like a move and, and a call and nothing that uh, call it with uh, float numbers. So in this case, it will be int a and int b. If we examine the, the second 
a function. So this function receives two uh, numbers, but in this time it will be eight bytes. Uh, so in this case, we can see that the uh, numbers are stored in RDX and REX. Both of them are eight bytes. And in this case, it will be two longs. So it will be long A and long B. And the numbers for them would be five and 10. Uh, you can see it because it's like a hex, so it, the number 10 in the symbol. And for the uh, last and the third function, we can see that we have two integers too. So in this case, it would be the number four and nine. And both of them are also stored in edX and eax. And those are four bytes uh, registers. So in order to uh, continue with our research, we would also have to examine the functions themselves. So if we want to do so, we would have to rename everything. So it would be much easier to understand what uh, of the functions we are talking about. So the first function with the two integers would be called function A. The second one with the two long A would be a uh, function B. And the third one with the two integers would be a uh, function C. So now we will dive into each one of them to understand better what is the purpose of each function and what is exactly uh, the purpose of it. And we will try to correlate it with what we learned so far about templates. So first, let's examine a function A. So this is the first function we are examining. We would change first the function definition, the declaration. Uh, and we would change it to have two parameters of type int. So as you can see here, uh, I changed it to int a and int b. Uh, the return value was, is still unclear because we haven't reversed the function yet. So we would continue researching it and afterwards we will change it to whatever uh, that is the most suitable uh, type for it. So after we finish the declaration, we can dive into the assembly itself. Uh, you can see that the parameters that we passed in A and B are stored locally on the stack. So we can rename the local variables. So I change it to int A and int B. And uh, afterwards, we can see that the numbers are compared. And um, after they are compared, they check if which one of the numbers is uh, larger than the other. So if B is larger than A, so the function will return a uh, b but if a is larger than b so we would return the uh, a number so uh, what we can see here is that the uh, function check which of the number is larger and uh, returns the larger number out of the two that we provided in this case uh, both of them are integers so it will return an integer uh, and because we know now that the return value is an integer, we can also change the function declaration. So now we change the function declaration and, and we also change the function name because now we know what is this function exactly. And after we finished with function A and we understood uh, how it looks like and what are the exact types that it receives, we can go and overview a uh, function B. So because it's, um, the process will be um, faster this time because we already saw function A, function B is quite similar. So we received both of the long numbers uh, in RDI and RSI, and they are stored on the stack. So I change again the uh, name of the local variables to long, A and B. And, and we can see that later in this function, we are uh, having a comparison between the two numbers. So they are both compared. And afterwards, if uh, long b is larger than long a, so the function uh, returns the long b. And if uh, a is larger than b, so it will return a. You might uh, feel like you already saw some similar functions. So as you assume, this is very similar to function a. The function checks which one of the numbers is larger and then returns the larger number. And the return value is a long this time, and not an int. For the third function, so function C, we can see that the function is much uh, shorter, just a few lines of assembly. We have the two uh, received parameters, which is in D and in C. 
Both of them are all stored on the stack, like in the previous cases. Just this time, the function subtracts the two numbers from each other. So we have an int d, and it just subtracts an int c from it and returns the result. So this function is different, although it receives the same parameter. So if you want to conclude everything that we learned so far and understood, so we have function a and b, both of them calculate the maximum of two numbers and returns the number that is larger. Function a uses uh, two integers and function b uses two long. And function c is a little bit different, it subtracts two numbers uh, and both of the numbers need to be integers. And if we want to understand uh, based on what we learned so far, we can see that actually uh, function a and b are part of a template because both of them have the same purpose. They have the same uh, function, but they are using different types and return different types. But both of them calculate which of the numbers is larger and returns the larger number. This is why this is a template. So if we look at function C, we can see it's different. It's just like a regular function that subtract two numbers. What I'm trying to uh, emphasize here is that in order to understand that the function that you are looking at is actually a template, you would have to uh, research, reverse, and analyze a lot of the binary and a lot of the functions to understand those correlations. So in this case, it's quite a short functions, only a few lines of assembly code, but if you have a larger binary, you would have to do a lot of a reversing a work in order to uh, understand the purpose of each of the function and to understand the different types. So you would have to understand what are the different types a function receives, what it returns, and also which of the function actually do the same thing, just with different types. And in this way, you would be able to correlate from the functions that you uh, reverse and research uh, what exactly are the templates that you have in the binary. But as you can see, in this case, you also have regular functions that are just like defined like in a regular way, uh, and you would have to do a lot of work to get it. So this is why I said like, Reversing template is a very complex thing to do when you do uh, reversing. So um, this is require a lot of work, but after you do all of those things, so the binary kind of have a whole map of the functions and you would have a better understanding of the binary that you are researching. So this is very important. Another thing that we would have to cover, because it's very important, is defining the templates in IDA. You saw previously, I just like changed the names and the declaration, only the parameters and the return value were changed. But in this case, we will have a template and we do want it to use, for example, the same name, but with different declaration because the declaration should have the template kind of um, convention. But in order to do it in IDA, it's not like you have a button to just click and say, okay, this is a template, that's it, bye. You would have to uh, do a lot of and mapping and to understand how to do it, you would have to uh, understand the uh, mangled name of the function you want. So, uh, for example, if we want to take uh, the long max long long, which is one of the functions that we researched, we would have to use the mangled name. In this case, you can see it here on the slide, but you would have to use the mangled name in order to uh, change the function name to be a more uh, more specific and more correct. So in order to do that, you can right click and edit function, or you can use Alt B, and then you would have this window open. Uh, you can use the name of function to change the name. If you just use N, it's not gonna be good enough in many of the cases. So this is giving you a more complete uh, understanding of what you have in the function. It can also help you in other cases uh, when you do reversing, but if we use that, so we just take the mangled name uh, of the function and we can uh, write it in the name of the function. Now, after we do that, we can see that the uh, binary and the name of the function uh, were changed from the uh, long max long long to long max with this um, brackets on, on the long. Uh, and it's more clear that what we are looking at is actually a template 
We can do the same for the int type of this function. And in other cases, you can do the same for each of the functions. And the only limitations that you would have to have the mental names for each of the functions. You can just like analyze uh, the function that you want to uh, rename to create a mental name for each of those. So um, this is what you uh, actually have to do when you have basic templates in the binary. And you would have to research everything, understand the functions, understand which function do a similar purpose and which uh, parameters are different to create the template and to understand how to rename and understand that. It's not like a very like easy and, and um, short walk. It will take time, but it will be worth it and your binary will look much, much better. So I hope you learn from it and good luck.